I'm Gary Bowles. I'm the host of Global Skills Day 2021. And with me is just an amazing gentleman, Nestor Marquez, who is the CEO of Future Experts. Now, it might look like he is orbiting the Earth, but actually he's based in Mexico. Yeah. Uh, although he has extremely lofty thoughts about the future of work and how to build a more human-centric future. And uh, Nestor, it's a great opportunity for me to be able to pick your amazing brain about some of the, the big trends that are affecting us and some of the things that especially people in organizations need to do to ensure that we're building that more human-centric future of work and learning. Please, we need to build that human-centered future. Thank you, Gary, for having me having me here. So and, and my good day for all the people that is attending. Congratulations on this exciting event that you are developing the best luck. Well, thank you. It's very gratifying, Nestor. It's just an, uh, just an amazing group of people. And uh, what is stunning is just um, it's under 25 speakers in, in 26 countries. But what is just stunning is just the range of perspectives and just how global the, the speakers and the attendees will be, but how common so many of the issues are. And I know that you and I have discussed, you know, it's a lot of these issues are, are very much on the ground challenges and opportunities in Mexico and, and beyond in, in Latin America. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to talk about, I, I think we sort of all gotten a lot of the memo about the problem domain, the challenges in trying to transform, especially leveraging technology to do that. Uh, but you've actually been focused on helping people to understand some of these seismic shifts and, and think about the solutions domain. And you've mm -hmm. typically talked about sort of four arenas. You've said uh, you have to focus on strategy, you got to focus on people, you got to focus on the process, and you got to focus on technology. Mm -hmm. So Help me understand that construct and uh, and where do you start? Like, how do you help somebody that is trying to shift an organization to be able to adapt in this, uh, hopefully post COVID era in where these massive shifts in work and learning, how do you help, help tell people where to start? Well, uh, thank you, Gary. Well, digital transformation and the future of work are like the Two, two faces of the same coin, right? So in one hand, you have what organizations have to do. On the other hand, you have what people have to do. So that is basically the objective of what, what I'm doing with these four pillars. So in the case of technology, is it's easy. It's, a, it's an enabler. Technology can make our lives much, much better, I think. We have developed in all this 100, 150 years, developing our lives, our societies with technology. We have a lot of things to still to do, but for me, technology is not the issue. It's not the issue, and probably even the technology will be much stronger and powerful in the future. The problem is not with the technology. The problem is what we are doing with technology. So processes in that sense is very important. How do we organize ourselves? How we plan to use technology? How we measure technology? How we orient technology is what is very, very important. Then the second point here is people. We have to put people in the center of all our conversations, not because I wanna do, I want to be people-centric completely because that was a mistake in the past and probably that could be a mistake in the future. If we put in the people in the center and we don't do not consider other species and we don't not consider the planet, we can also have a problem. But in general terms, we are considering this human centric approach, including other species and the planet. But finally, where do we want to go? That is for me the central question. The central question is, because in general, when, when I'm hearing conversations about technology, technology will replace 50% of the jobs, millions of the jobs or whatever. But I never hear conversations about what do we want to do? What is our objective? What is our objective? What is, what is our plan? So I think we need to start asking those conversations. And, and we have to discuss a lot and a lot. We have to put, Utopia in the in the table, so 
for us will be much, much better to identify where we want to go. And there, for me, is the starting point. And I think the conversations, the kind that you are inspiring, is are in the right track to have these strategic conversations about our future. Well, so you use the hashtag, do not forget humans. <laughs> I use yeah. the hashtag, no human left behind, so we're completely in sync. Uh, but I think one of the things to me that is, is very useful from your perspective is um, you really come at it from a systems analysis approach. And, we, and we're always trying to encourage people to understand the system that they're trying to change. How yeah. do you help a, a corporate decision maker to look at you? You've, you've talked about the broader landscape and, and mm -hmm. all the different elements, including you know, being ensuring that you're focusing on the issues of the planet. But corporate decision makers, they've got shareholders beating up on them. They've got a whole bunch of employees that they're trying to help to go through these transitions. How do you help them to understand? They, they, they typically want to often start with the technology, certainly here in Silicon Valley, yeah. that's what we do. Yeah. But as you said, yeah. you know, the technology is kind of an enabler. What's the, is there a mindset or is there an approach in the way that, that the people who lead in organizations should change their thinking to be able to help have this more human-centric approach? Well, I developed a digital transformation diploma at Activo Monterrey seven years ago, okay? And then when we started with this model of strategy, people, process, and technology, at the beginning, people didn't understand very well what we were aiming to. And now, we, I think with the pandemic, things have changed because now they realize that if the things speed up too much, they, they don't have any, any chances. And more in Latin America, in countries like Latin America, because this situation is completely different when you are in countries that are traditionally the generators of technology, the new technologies and new processes and new works and etc. And when you are in Latin America, where in general, governments and also companies, they were thinking to export using cheap labor. That was the differentiation. So the change in mentality is tremendous. Then when we are talking about all of this, they say, hey, hey but I need to make money because the kind of conversations or the kind of discussion that you are promoting, where is the money now? No, the money is there. The only thing that we have to think is if we don't have a stable society, if we, I think we learned with experience in the US in the 20s and the 30s, okay, the, the previous century, if, if people don't have jobs, they are not going to die quietly. They will, they will start to make pressure on governments and companies. So uh, if we don't think about in these ideas, if we don't think that we, it's not sustainable to try to compete just because of the price of the labor in an environment where platforms are helping that discussion to develop that discussion all over the world, the, the, the competition here in Latin America will be tremendous. So in, La in Latin America, we, we do not think in terms of the future. We are, we are all the time looking and thinking about the past, probably sometime in, into the future, but never into the, the or sometime today, but we never into the future. So trying, trying to turn the heads of the leaders in Latin America, it's a major, it's a major challenge. Yeah. No, I think this is, I mean, I'm, I'm going to say it's, it's, it's a challenge beyond Latin America as well. I did the typically, I mean, and I, I understand completely a lot of the, the challenges, but also the opportunities for those who lead in organizations. Um, you know, one of the things I talk about in the, in the book, Actuals of Work is trying to help the people who lead in organizations to just develop that, that new mindset where there's a sort of, you can think of it like with a camera, you open the aperture. That yeah, is, sure. in the past, we sort of pushed and, you know, you had a lot of the noise and and uh, the impetus was coming from your shareholders. And, well, we have to open the aperture. And, and actually, yeah. you're 
workers are stakeholders as well. Your partners, the communities in which you operate, that planet that you were talking about, they're also constituents as well. And that might sound like just a mind blowing number of things to try to manage. But the truth is there's some anchors, some very important anchors that you can follow that will ensure that you're actually doing the right thing by all of them. And if you do that, then that increases the brand of the organization, increases your connection to your customers. And then that means your shareholders are gonna be happy. But, sure. but it's the, so, so much of the pressure that so many, as our friend John Hagel talks about, is the pressure that so many of those who lead in organizations feel is they think they have to bow to that pressure to hit quarterly results and just generate near-term returns. And we need to open that aperture and help them to be you. able to see the opportunities by, by having uh, meeting the needs of more, more stakeholders. Yes, well, in general, I like that metaphor about the opening the, the aperture, yes, of, of the image of the perception of the world. Imagine that situation in Latin America. In Latin America, where the companies in general with, with, a, with an idea, with, with a better a differential in, in the price of labor, we were competing against the rest of the world. But now if technology is taking that place, if robots are taking that place, if artificial intelligence, automated assistants are doing that work, if there is not a, there is not a reason why to install a, a, a plant in Latin America, if you can do install that plant in the US, okay? Because, and it's closer to the more important markets and the, where the price differentiation is higher, then Latin America had to make a tremendous change in, 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 in mindset, okay? And my discussion with leaders, because I'm trying to run these processes with leaders of medium, small, and large corporations, because even in large corporations, because they have the vision, but they don't have the tool set, okay? They have the, the mindset or the mind flex, let, let's call it, yes? But they don't have the tool set or the flame or the tool flex, yes? Because nothing about set, it's, it's about flex. So the flexibility in thinking, new opportunities in thinking new businesses, new business models, new role for people. And something that I am trying to do is showing them here, governments, univer even universities, uh, workers, leaders in organizations, hey, there is a lot of people out there, they are thinking completely different. For instance, the Chinese, what organization or civilizations like, or societies like the Chinese, they are trying to eat the world because they, they are hunger to do the things completely different. And I say, this is what these guys are doing. This is Europe with all the knowledge, with all these years, Germany, the UK, Spain, France. So they have that talented, brains and manpower. And you have the US who is challenging how to face the future in this world that is changing leadership. And where is Latin America? So what I'm trying to say, hey guys, if we don't change, I don't want you to be perceived in the future like a society that lost the train of the digitalization and we are in the third or fourth level. No, we have I think we are in a very good situation if we change completely, because we have a lot of people here in Latin America, for instance, Mercado Libre is competing head to head with Amazon in Latin America, okay? And it's, I think it's a city, I, I like Amazon in general. I, there are some certain things that we have to discuss with these guys, hey, about jobs, about how to people be paid, what about the, the different, protections for work, it's an area we have to discuss. And even with Mercado Libre probably in the future, but they are competing successfully. And we have a lot of companies in Latin America that are succeeding. And what happened with the rest? It is an inferiority, there is a problem in the chip, in the mind, or it's a mindset. And for me, it's a mindset. And then that's, that's why I'm trying to challenge leaders and 
trying, challenging workers with this idea. And I thought at the beginning that workers would be much difficult to convince because they say, no, okay, yes, but this is always the same. We have to change our brains and the money is, is done by somebody else. And no, I think the, the, the more difficult situation with the leaders is the this mindset because in general, in all of Latin America, the difference between the rich and the poor is huge. And then societies, companies, uh, people of uh, affluent people, we were, we are accustomed with that situation. So to break that situation, it's it's really a moonshot. No, I appreciate your that absolutely. The most important thing I think my takeaway is is that we, we, we obviously we want workers to be able to continually be, be adaptive in this in this uh, era, uh, especially as we hopefully will enter the post pandemic era. Uh, yeah. But the but the real need is to help those who lead in organizations to be able to embrace yeah a newer mindset that's that's much yeah. more inclusive so that's i know i know our time today is short there's just any last final thought before we we sign off for our viewers yes uh, for me the, the final thought is is the the same effort to build a company to build a business to build an operation to build a product everything is the is the same effort to do something great than to do something mediocre, right? And in general, I think in Latin America, we didn't see, perceive things that way. So I think if we change our, if we up, open our aperture, as you say, as you mentioned, if we open our aperture, then I think there is a huge future for Latin America because in, in general, Latin Americans are creative. In general, Latin Americans is people that like people, like to treat people. We love to be in touch with people. We are very warm. So it's a it's a it's a it's a very special moment. Well, my point is of the four pillars. If we change our mindset and we pay more much more attention to processes, we are done. We are we have two out of the four. Then. I think, uh, but we have to start working today. We have to start discussing the things. What's the role of the governments? What are the roles of organizations? What are the roles of the individuals, of the leaders? Because nobody can save the future in the individually. It's a it's a it's a team work. This uh, to have a better future, and I, I think that is a challenge. No, it's it's absolutely. I think if there's any one takeaway I've, I've gotten from just talking to so many amazing people that are involved in Global Skills Day, it's that there is a hunger for making these collaborative solutions. Sure. So, anyway, absolutely. Nesta Marquez, thank you so much. It's always wonderful to talk to you. Thank you very much. So, and yeah, tremendously the, the same for me, Gary. Thank you. Be well. Thank you.